Hi guys! This video is about vitamin D and athletic performance and I'm going to look at how optimal vitamin D levels is important for athletes for injury prevention and to help you recover more quickly from training. The things we're going to cover is all the benefits it holds for athletes specifically. Vitamin D is vitally important for all people, but there are certain aspects where it benefits athletes even more. So we're only going to cover those points. Then we're going to look at where vitamin D comes from, all the sources you can get it from, um, who's at risk of low vitamin D levels, um, what are optimal vitamin D levels. So how do you know if you're, if you're within the, the range that's okay? And lastly, we're going to look at how much vitamin D do you need? If you're planning on taking supplements, what type of supplement levels or supplementation levels are you looking for? My name is Mareka. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the physiotherapist from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. You can have a look at the um, description of this video. There's a link to my website. Excellent. So remember, as we go on, if you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments or message me or email me. Happy to come back to you guys. And yeah, if you can tag me, because then I'll know they're there. So we'll jump right in and look at the benefits. So what are the benefits specifically for athletes? The things we're going to cover, and I'm going to go into a lot more detail about them, is bone health, muscle function, muscle repair, heart function, immune function, and the link with iron deficiency as well. So bone health. I think that's the most common one people talk about when they talk about vitamin D these days, that it's really important for strong bones. So what vitamin D does is you need it in order for your gut to be able to absorb enough calcium and calcium is the building blocks for your bones. The vitamin D also activates um, vitamin K, which is an important part of um, the building blocks or has an important function for strong bones. So it's important for bone density, it's important for forming new bone cells and there was a study where they looked at Navy recruits. So remember whenever you go through, um, oops, I'm in South Africa at the moment, I think we've got a baboon on the ceiling but or on the roof so ignore funny noises if you hear them. Um, so whenever you have Navy recruits or military recruits they always go through quite rigorous training and they are often prone to stress fractures. So for this study, they looked at if they give some of the recruits 800 international units of vitamin D supplements per day for eight weeks, what happens? And what they found was the group that received the supplementation was much less likely to, it was a 20% um, lower incidence of stress fractures for that group. So there's definitely a benefit for athletes to take vitamin D supplements um, to help with bone health and possibly preventing uh, stress fractures. Then if we look at muscle function, there was a group of researchers in the UK that took um, runners in the winter months and they tested them all for vitamin D levels and they found that only 1.6% of that massive group of athletes were not vitamin D deficient. And I'll get to the levels that you want in a minute. Um, so 1.6% of the athletes had enough vitamin D in their systems. So they took the portion of athletes that were deficient and they um, randomized, controlled them. So they, they split them in two groups. And for one group, they gave supplements. Uh, they used quite a high supplementation. They used 5,000 international units of vitamin D supplementation. And they gave it to them for eight weeks as well. And they looked at their performance in running. So they looked at 10 meter sprint times and they looked at their vertical jump height to test how well their muscles functioned. And they found that the group that received the supplementation had significantly improved their 10 meter sprint times as well as vertical jump height compared to the group that didn't receive it. So if you're deficient in vitamin D, you may be limiting your muscle function or how well your muscles work if you're an athlete. Then with regards to muscle repair, so now we're looking at what happens to muscles after you've trained, the training adaptations of it. And a research study also showed that if you have more than 30 nanograms per milliliter, so you'll see in a minute that 30 nanograms per milliliter is kind of the um, seen as the normal range. So if you've got normal or higher, 
the athletes recovered better, um, their, their muscles recovered more quickly, and it was better quality of muscle cells that formed. Now, the ones that had less than 23 of those units in their blood, so towards they were deficient and towards insufficiency, they actually took longer to recover. And they found for the ones that had those low levels, if they tested them in pre-season and it showed low levels of vitamin D, and then those athletes had a high load of um, competitions that they took part in, those ones with the low levels in pre-season actually sustained more muscle tears. Also, for the athletes who had a history of previous um, muscle strains, now we know if you have a history of previous muscle strains, you're more likely to injure that muscle again. But for that group of athletes, the ones that had the low levels of vitamin D were even more likely to injure their muscles again. So vitamin D level seems to be quite important, not just for muscle function, but also for how well you re recover after a session and during a session, how much your, your muscles can um, handle the load. Then we move on to heart function. Now, there's been extensive research out there on just regular people, like people who don't do exercise necessarily, that's shown that vitamin D is vitally important for good heart function. There's only one study that I found that looked at athletes specifically, and what they found was that the ones that was, had insufficient less levels, less than 20, uh, what's the units, milli, nanograms per milliliters, I've got it all written out in a minute, you'll see it all. The ones that were had insufficient levels of vitamin D, they, those athletes actually had smaller hearts than the athletes who were just a little bit um, deficient or had normal levels. So very low, very, very low levels that can, that's seen as levels that can cause chronic diseases also cause may be the reason why those athletes had smaller hearts than the other ones. But more research actually needs to be done on that one. Then immune function. And again, this is one that applies to anybody and everybody, even the people who don't train. But now remember that athletes are more prone to upper respiratory tract infections, so sore throats um, and coughs and things when they train really hard. And what the research is showing is that optimal vitamin D levels also, uh, if you've got optimal vitamin D levels, you're less likely to get those types of infections as an athlete. So for your immune function, being able to train through the winter times, vitamin D is quite important. Now, lastly, there seems to be a link between low iron levels and low vitamin D levels in that people who's, who are iron deficient are often also vitamin D deficient. But the researchers aren't sure how that relationship works. So they don't know if this one causes that one or that one causes this one or that is just per chance that something else is causing both of them. So what I will say at this point is if you are prone to iron deficiency, it's maybe a good idea to have your vitamin D levels checked as well because you may be vitamin D deficient. But don't just decide that it is like that. Ask your doctor for a test. Very well. Let's move on to the next bit. So remember, if you guys have any questions about any of this, just ask them in the comments. And if I can answer them, I'll definitely answer them. So where does vitamin D come from? Now, the biggest source of vitamin D is from the sun. So when we have, when UV rays um, shine on our skin, we create our own vitamin D. But the problem these days is that we also know that a lot of sun exposure causes skin cancer. And that's why so many people these days are deficient. But I'll get on to that point in a minute again. Um, so the sun is the main source, but then you can get it from foods, oily fish, both their livers as well as their flesh, so the meat from oily fish, um, is really high in it. Mushrooms, if you're vegan and you don't want to use animal products, mushrooms seems to be a very good source of it. And you'll see, you'll notice on um, some of the mushroom packets in the UK these days, they actually show that it's got vitamin D in it. Um, then, if you don't mind animal products, beef liver, dairy, egg also has some of it in, some in it, but not a lot. You'll have to eat loads and loads of eggs to get enough of it. And then fortified products. So loads of other products these days has it as a supplement in it. So orange juice, milk, all of those things. So again, if you're vegan and you don't want to eat the, the animal products, have a look. There are orange juices. There are other things out there that does have vitamin D in it because it's been put in it, which 
also brings me to supplements. Supplements can work and works really well. And you get different types. You get mouth sprays, you get um, liquid form that you swallow, or you get tablets. I've seen studies that suggest that the mouth sprays are absorbed better, but um, they're definitely not the only thing you can use. And in the research studies that I've read, they've used several different types and they all seem, whoops, crashed the iPad. They all seem to work pretty well. So those are the sources of where you can get vitamin D. Now, how do you know if you may be at risk of low levels of vitamin D? So if we think that, that the sun is the main source, if you don't get sunshine on you, then you may have a problem with, with vitamin D unless you're taking supplements. So if you spend a lot of time indoors, we're thinking of our elderly people, especially who are stuck inside because of mobility issues and things like that. They are very prone to vitamin D deficiency. In the UK, when I was working in my, in my clinic there or in the clinic that I worked in, I didn't even have any windows there. So if you tally up how often I actually saw the sun, if I worked my long hours, I didn't get much sun exposure at all. So go and have a think about how much sun exposure you actually get. Um, if you use sunblock when you're in the sun, you're also not getting UV rays on your skin. So that may also cause you to be vitamin D deficient. My mum, she's lived in South Africa in the Karoo, which is semi-desert area all her, or most of her life, which gets loads of sun. But because skin cancer is such a problem over here, she's been putting on factor 50 for years and years and years. And when her rheumatologist tested her, she actually was really heavily vitamin D deficient. So she's having to use supplements. Um, countries that's far from the equator, like the UK, especially during the winter times and during, um, my English is letting go, <laughs> springtime, as well as um, during the fall, you may not get enough UV rays because the sun's not at the right angle. Um, so, and interestingly enough, most of the studies where they've tested athletes who run outside in the UK all year round have been vitamin D deficient in the winter times. So you may want to be supplementing um, if you live in, what, in a country that's not close to the equator. And I've spoken about winter basically because you just don't see the sun that much and we tend to cover up. But then also, if you tend to cover up for religious reasons, for, so for instance, if you're going outside into the sun, but all that's showing is your hands and your face, then you may not be getting enough vitamin D either. And there was an interesting um, study where they looked at athletes from all different countries and Israeli, Israeli athletes, and if you think of Israel, lots of sun, were heavily deficient. I think it was something like 60 or 70% of the athletes they tested were vitamin D deficient. And that may also have to do with the fact that you don't actually run outside in those hot countries when it's really hot. You tend to do your training before the sun is properly out. Um, and then digestive issues. So if you don't absorb well from your gut or you have irritable bowel or something like that, it may mean that you, you're not getting enough vitamin D from the foods that you eat, even if you do eat a lot of oily fish and things. But the best way to know if you are vitamin D deficient is to have yourself tested and your GP can do a blood test for that. Uh, right, what's the next one? Okay, so what are normal levels? Now, vitamin D is tested in two different formats that, or measurements, and I have no idea if I'm saying them right, so you're gonna have to just read there. I think it's nanograms per milliliter, and the other one, 50 nanomoles per liter. I'm not sure, I talk, I'm talking under correction. I just always look at what's written on the paper. I know how to interpret that. I don't know how to say it. But less than 20, if you're going for the NG slash ML, is deficient. So that means you're at the levels where this can now start really affecting um, your health and causing some or contributing to some chronic diseases. Insufficient, you won't see those heavy effects, but it's still not optimal levels. So that's between 20 and 32 and optimal is seen as more than 40. Now that optimal level um, varies depending on what research you read or what articles and things you read. The researchers are really not sure yet about what are optimal levels for most people and for athletes and for all the different groups. So these guidelines may very well change. But at the moment, as a rough ballpark figure, that seems to apply to most people at this point. 
So if you want to interpret your normal levels, those are kind of what's seen as normal. Just make sure that you're looking at the right um, numbers or the right measurement levels, because otherwise you may think, oh, I'm fine, I've got, I've got 49. But if it's um, not in the right measurement or level, it may not be the right thing. Okay, and then how much supplements should you be taking if you want to take any? That, again, is not very clear. So I'm going to actually make this quite nice and big so you can read it. So you'll see in this um, table, you've got the figures from the National Institute of Medicine and you've got the figures from the Endocrine Society. And they vary quite a bit. If we just look at the adults between ages 19 to 17 years, for the National Institute of Medicine, they say you should only be taking 600 international units per day. Um, whereas the Endocrine Society is saying, no, 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 you can take 1,500 to 2,000 international units per day to get your levels there. And again, it's because there's a lot of uncertainty still with regards to what are optimal levels? Can people overdose on these things? Um, there seems to be a trend in the re research that people seems to agree that um, if you take more than 4,000 international units per day for a very long period of time, that can cause an overdose. But that is not definitive yet. So if you want to err on the side of safety, I would say if we look at those tables, up to 2,000 international units daily could be useful, especially if you're in winter season or you're not coming out, or you can play with it. That's for some periods of the year, you take higher loads, and then for some periods of the year when you're getting more sun, you take less. Um, but yes, maybe speak to your GP about that, all of this, because they are the best place to advise you about this. Excellent. So let me know if you've got any questions. If you need more help with the injury, you're welcome to consult me via video call. Link to my website is in this video and I hope you have a really good day. Take care.